The Student Association presented various initiatives to improve student life on campus. We'll have more details on our meeting report. Also, SA Representative Phil Porter will be here to talk about a new pre-orientation program for freshman students in collaboration with Orange Seeds. And a winter storm is coming our way. We'll have full details tonight. I'm Max Darrow, and welcome to SA Today. We begin tonight's headlines with an alert issued by the Department of Public Safety. Currently, DPS is investigating a series of thefts that have occurred in academic buildings on main campus. The thefts have been occurring after business hours in the past few weeks and appear to have occurred during the night in locked buildings. DPS is encouraging students to report any suspicious activity, doors that are unlocked, and persons with any suspicious behaviors to the department immediately. <coughs> And Syracuse's first game as the top-ranked team in the nation came last night against their old Big East foe, Notre Dame. The Orange came out on top, defeating the Fighting Irish 61-55. to Over half of Syracuse's points came from redshirt sophomore Trevor Cooney, who had a career-best 33 points while matching the single-game school record of nine three-pointers. The Orange improved to 22-0 on the season and 9-0 in the ACC conference play. And the recent lack of snow here in central New York is coming to a close. Make sure to have your best snow gear handy come Wednesday morning. The winter storm heading towards central New York is expected to hit its peak then. Between the hours of 3 and 9 a.m., the expected snowfall rate is 1 to 2 inches per hour. In total, the city of Syracuse should expect to get 6 to 10 inches of snow with wind gusts up to 30 miles per hour tomorrow afternoon. Well, the Weather Channel released their annual results for the snowiest city in America. And to no one's surprise here in central New York, the city of Syracuse tops the list again. The ranking is based on average yearly snowfall, where Syracuse has accumulated 126.3 inches in total. Erie, Pennsylvania finished second on the list with 100.8 inches in total, just over two feet of total snow less than Syracuse. And electropop artist St. Lucia will headline Syracuse University Union's first spring semester Bandersnatch concert. Along with St. Lucia, ASTR, another electropop band, will perform as well. Both artists share a similar style of music, which combines contemporary electropop while drawing mu on music from past decades. The event is currently scheduled for March 5th, with ticket prices at $5. Syracuse fans are encouraged to bring canned goods to the basketball game versus NC State on Saturday the 15th. Can It is a university-wide initiative that aims to donate to the food bank of Central New York. All goods can be dropped off on game day at the Carrier Dome gates. In the meantime, donation boxes will be set up Monday the 10th and Friday the 14th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Shine. Monetary donations will also be accepted. And coming up next on Essay Today, a report from last night's meeting. A set of new student initiatives were presented and will be discussed more next week. We'll have that and more details when we come back. My block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. And Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative. It's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Now it's time for This Week in Bad Stats. Bad stats? Horrible stats. Here goes. 132. That's how many batters struck out four times in one game last season. Wow, very good. Here's a tough one, though. Three and four. No idea. That's how many kids have witnessed bullying. Three out of four. That's not a good stat. No, it's not, but it can change. Kids want to help, but they don't know how. Visit StopBullying.gov and give them the tools they need to help prevent bullying. There are plenty of safe ways kids can help at StopBullying.gov. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting! Oh, poop already! You're making me nervous! Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. 
I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. The 58th session met for a fourth meeting last night, and President Gressley addressed many different topics. One of the major discussions was about Gressley meeting up with Chancellor Kent Siverud tomorrow. Prior to his address, the President had a list of topics that he personally wanted to speak to the Chancellor about. But then at the meeting, he opened the floor to the rest of the Assembly to see what they wanted to bring up. With that, the President and the Assembly concluded that President Gressley will plan to speak about tuition, study spaces, renovations on dorms, student life initiatives, leadership programs, issues about Bird Library and the Shine Student Center, and also the possibility of creating a student affairs summit. But most importantly, Gressley said that Syracuse University does not have an identity at this moment, and he will ask the Chancellor, what is the identity of SU? Furthermore, Gressley explained that SA may help promote the Orange After Dark program more in the future but made it clear that SA is not a programming board, but an organization that is here to lobby for student interest. And later in the evening, the director of student life, Aisha Sadat, presented many different issues on campus and proposed initiatives that will either prevent or solve them. The first initiative involved transfer students. Sadat explained that many of the transfer students feel disconnected from campus, living up in Sky Hall. Many of them even felt the urge to transfer again because of this. Her solution is to help educate them about alternative housing and also to review the 12 credit minimum for SU students to participate in Greek life. Transportation issues are another big concern. Many students who work in buildings in the SU area don't have a way to get to work, as the Connective Corridor, Cas Limo, Shaw Center, and Centro bus routes don't cover them. Her solution is to talk to DPS, Shuttle You Home, and Student Employment Services to better accommodate the students. Sadat wants to make the Advocacy Center a better and more known resource to students as well. She, so, she wants to first create a flyer with all of the available resources on campus and post it, but secondly, she wants to create a faculty student council on sexual violence prevention. Sadat also noted that a lack of recycling is a major problem on campus. So, she proposed a few ideas to fix this, one of which included giving students a five cent return to their supercards. Finally, the last issue that she presented was on hunger on the hill. Many students are not utilizing the food pantry in Hendricks Chapel, and she wants to increase publicity of that resource. And coming up next, Phil Porter will be here to talk about the SA and Orange Seeds orientation program for new freshmen on campus and more. You're watching SA Today. Don't go anywhere. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. We are different. Society should aspire to be more like us. Be part of the first class. Get energized. Get outside. Hold on, guys. It's gonna get bumpy. And get moving. Experience the power of physical activity. Woo! <laughs> Join the movement at ActionHeroAlliance.com. Party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get 
come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. And welcome back. During last, night, last night's SA meeting, an initiative was formed with Orange Seas to develop a new leadership orientation program for incoming freshmen. Joining us now to explain more is SA Arts and Sciences Representative Phil Porter. Phil, welcome. Thank you for having me. So Phil, I, can you tell me a little bit about this new pre-orientation program that SA is working on with Orange Seeds? Well, yes. I originally had this idea going back and I was trying to work with admissions to try to um, inform incoming students more about SA so we can have more of an informed population coming in. If we have more of an informed population coming in, then we are able to have a more informed voters and we become better. So I got an email from Matt Mazur from Orange Seeds who said he was interested in working, me with, working with me on this and then we've been in the process of putting this program together and we're working with Orange Seeds and with Lisa Chesney in the first office of first year programs office. Okay, um, so that answers my second question, but uh, are you involved in Orange Seeds? I'm not, but I have tremendous respect for the organization. I have a couple of really good friends who are in there, and they have nothing but good things to say about Orange Seeds. Okay. Do you think the program will bring a lot of success in teaming up with SA and bringing awareness to what SA does? I think so. I think that if we can have a group of, we can have a group of ambitious incoming students, they can get to know campus leaders right away and then they can be put in a position to make as good of a uh, difference when they come here as possible and quickly. When you came into Syracuse, did you feel like you knew enough about the Student Association? I did not, although I got lucky very quickly that I was able to get in contact with Dwayne Ford, who was the Vice President of the 57th Session, and I was able to meet with him and then to get close to the people who were in power. But I feel like there are people I've noticed who have come in and not had the same benefit that I've had, and I want to make that happen less. Okay. Uh, going to last night's meeting, what was your take on the proposed <clears throat> initiatives? Um, I think Aisha is doing a, a fantastic job with student life. I really think that, especially transfer students, because these are students who have had, for whatever reason, have had a not great experience at wherever they were before. So we really need to make sure that when they come here, that they do find a home. And it's really a shame to hear that some are wanting to transfer because of a lack of a good experience living in Sky Hall. So I think if we can use this initiative to get, get them more interconnected with what's going on on campus, then we can have more happy students, which fosters a better sense of community as a whole for the SU campus. Do you think that Aisha's suggestions were very relevant and effective, or do you think that they need to be amended a little bit more? I think we're, we're off to a good start. I think that it's, right now we're at the easy part. It's easy to sit around and come up with ideas. But I think that, and I have confidence with the fact that this committee, that I'll work with Aisha, with Aisha and the rest of the committee to make sure that these ideas come to fruition because they need to come to fruition for them to be worthwhile. And what would you think about getting a five cent return on your supercard for recycling a plastic bottle every time? I try to recycle, but I don't always because of general laziness or I don't see the recycling bin. So I think if we provide a monetary benefit for students, I think this is a very good policy to increase um, recycling on campus. And I personally haven't heard too much about Hunger on the Hill and the Food Pantry and Hendrix Chapel. How do you think SA will be able to raise publicity about it? I hope that we are able to raise publicity about, the, uh, about Hunger on the Hill and the Food Pantry because as a part of Student Life last session, I was able to work with the um, Food Pantry a little bit. I've talked with them before and they said that they're just frustrated that we haven't gotten the word out there as much. And students need to know that this is a resource for them. And especially for the students that really do need this. They need to have, the, they need to have that info. So I think that uh, through the efforts of our committee that we'll get this out to more people and we can affect um, greater change in the lives of more um, students here on SU. Well, Phil, thank you so much for being with us tonight. And that's going to do it for SA Today tonight. A reminder that the SA meetings are held Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. in Maxwell Auditorium. Follow us on Twitter for the latest SA updates at SA underscore today. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 for Citrus TV News. I'm Max Darrow, and enjoy the rest of your evening, Syracuse. <laughs>